these numbers will blow you away. We knew we were creating something, but we did not quite know what we were. We did not know the results would be what they are. How do you recruit and retain happy agents? I'm on a mission to answer that question by talking with the unsung heroes that empower real estate agents. I'm Seth Price. Tune in each week as I sit down with back office heroes to learn what's working and what's not. Blake, really excited to have you. And um, thanks for joining. I'm, I've been wanting to have this conversation for a really long time. And, and you know that I've interviewed some people that you turned me on to. And now it's your turn. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. That's awesome. So the reason that I wanted to talk to you is, um, one, we've worked very closely together, right? You've been um, a supporter of Playster or user of Playster products for a long time, but I got a chance to visit your team and sit in your office and see how you guys work. And you guys do a lot for a small but growing team. And so I wanted to talk about that. And I wanted to talk about onboarding and all the other stuff that you guys do. But first, you know, tell me a little bit about the brokerage and about your team. I'm very excited to be here. Um, we have been working together since 2015, which is crazy. It's like six years. So we are located um, right outside of DC. I've yep. basically 40 miles out of DC. So yep. seven offices, we have 75 agents. Um, and if that sounds for our listeners, if that sounds like a lot, of uh, offices for the agents, it's because we're very geographically spread. Um, we have six staff, and then we have our two broker owners who also sell. Okay. And you guys, if I understand this correctly, not only have you grown agent count, but your productivity has sort of gone through the roof as well. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. In the past, like for example, last month, um, year over year, we would have had, we had 50 closed transactions the year before. And last year we had, I mean, last month we had 80. Um, so that's just one month. Yeah. Um, and the year before we grew by 40%. So, um, I mean, we are just continuing to grow. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. And what's, so you, the, all the team members, you've got six, what roles do they play just so people can understand sort of how yeah. you got um, we have, so I oversee all of our operations and then our owner sales and anything that revolves with their clients. Um, and then we have a director of agent success and technology. Yep. Um, we also have a creative director. Um, our creative director is the person that helps our agents create their brands, um, that really will sit down with them and strategically plan their marketing campaigns, advertising, and how they're going to carry that out. Yeah. Um, she also uh, oversees all the content writing. And then we have another staff member who actually does all of our content writing. So um, she works together with the creative director and she also does compliance. Okay. Um, and then we have um, two accounting staff. Okay. And um, I mean, I certainly know Shayla. Shayla is an amazing designer. I Brilliant. Mean, yeah. You say creative director. She's actually a really, really talented designer. Um, I did. I don't think I ever knew the story. How did you, how did you find her? <laughs> oh, we were just interviewing. So it was myself and one person in accounting and then our owners yeah. And we needed, I realized I was like, I need help. Like yeah. I had and I had been, I think Shayla joined us when I had been there a year. Yeah. So we just took any more interviews and we honestly had no idea like incredible person we were getting. I mean, yeah. Shayla blows me away. And yeah. I'm almost so spoiled because when I read other people's content and when I see other people's designs, the, she set the bar so high. So our agents are so um lucky to be able to work with her when you guys i mean this seems to be timely for lots of folks because you know the market is hot i mean i know inventory is a challenge um but when you think about growth and you think about your uh recruitment targets how do you even plan for onboarding like at what moment do you go oh we've really got to think about you know the process of taking care of the agents because yeah. in my experience you know, whoever is the recruiter, broker owner says, we need X number of agents every month to join. 
and all of the details are like, oh, we'll deal with that stuff later. And so that yeah. seems to be your job. Our onboarding really happened out of necessity. I'm a very organized and efficient person. And I am also on the other side of that. I want the agents from the moment they step in the door to have a really great experience. Yeah. It's hard enough moving brokerages. And once you've made that decision, it needs to be simple. I'm trying to think back to your question. How do I think about onboarding? So yeah, like how do, how do you well, the first question is how did you decide you needed to yes. do something different? To me, I didn't even know what I I just made up the process. So there wasn't like a this is what it was. Yeah. It was just like, okay. Like I think when I came on board, there was like an orientation book. Yeah. And you just sat with the agent in the conference room. And yeah. that was kind of what you did. So which is, I mean, if you think about that, it's comical. It's not unique that that happens. Most growing brokerages, when they're on the smaller side, they're like, you know, they know they need to recruit to grow. Yeah. But all of that, you know, operation stuff is like, well, we'll just get it done. Yeah. So Shayla and I, we just worked on the process. Like we would, we would have an orientation. Yeah. And then we'd be like, mm, what are we, what are we missing? Yeah. Or what are our agents? Where do we see problems in our processes with agents? What is our, what is our accounting staff struggling with from agents? Do yeah. we teach that to agents when they onboard? So for us, we really, like I said, it was, it was born um, out of necessity because we had to figure out what do these agents need to know. And for me, and I've had many, many agents come through our onboarding and tell, say, this, you know, I've been to three and four brokerages and this is the most amazing onboarding I've ever had. With our agents, what we do, um, the first step is they say, okay, yes, I want to join. Yeah. So then our agent success um, staff member, he connects with the agent and makes sure that all of their um, state licensing paperwork is yeah. done correctly. Yeah. Um, and he manages that process all the way up until we hear back from the state that we have their license in. Okay. And then we have orientation scheduled twice a month. So we just funnel agents into those. It's about two and a half hours, depending on the agent's questions. Yeah. Because of COVID, we moved everything remote and video, and that's how it will stay Yeah. Um, because we are so geographically spread. And is it, um, is it live? You say remote, but it's not pre-recorded, right? It's no, like, no, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's live. Yeah. And we've thought about doing it pre-recorded, but honestly, agents are going to watch that. It's a lot of information. And I think um, some, some orientations are quick and some are long because agents have questions and every single agent is going to come in knowing something different or not knowing anything at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for us, we have, the agent success coach, he introduces the agent to the other staff. Yeah. Um, and then our the first person that will um, speak in there is going to be our creative director. And she yeah. she basically goes over everything that is not accounting related. So okay. even though that's not her role, she does go over yeah. all of that. Yeah. Very, very detailed. I mean, we tell you how the copier works. We tell you how the phones work. We... I mean, every single detail, I'm trying to think of actual details that way I can be really helpful for agents. Um, what do I, how do I buy my signs? How, what apps do I need to download? When do you guys have meetings? The reason why we have found that to be important is because the moment that agent is done with orientation, for the most part, they're like, see ya, I want yeah. to go make money. Which is understandable. And, and then you have frustrated staff and that's not good. Yeah. Um, we also, um, our director of technology, he also sets up an appointment with the agent to go through our transaction management system, which we use um, ZipLogix or Lone Wolf. Yeah. Exchange names. Um, that has found to be hugely uh, helpful for our agents. And it makes our accounting staff happy as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's sort of hard to do compliance and accounting without organizing all that information. Yes. And then and then another thing that's really important is we have um, what's called role clarity cards in orientation that goes through what does every staff member do and what do you when who do you contact for what? What's the timeline? Your license comes in and at that point, because we're already John, who is our director of agent success and technology. He is already going to be communicating with the agent like, hey, your license might be in in a week. He's yeah. on that. Yeah. But they will, let's say it's a Tuesday and their license comes in, that they're already going to know their orientation is going to be that Thursday. Our yeah. orientations are on Thursdays. 
Yeah. Um, and then at that point, they've already gotten their email. They have their phone extension. They have all the things that they have to have to, to do business. They have their zip forms, login, loan wolf, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Um, so those are like the essential things. Yeah. And then orientation is kind of, we're going to go through everything else. How do you think about culture in that? Like culture is such a strange word because we talk about it a lot in our company. I sort of, I have this love hate with the word, which is, I think culture is what you do, not what you say, but you still have to sort of expose it in some way. And I'm curious how you guys talk about it. Our orientation, we're yeah. not going to sit down and be like, this is our culture. We have like crazy parties. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. we're not that brokerage. Yeah. We love those brokerages, but that's not us. We do have a very clear mission, vision, and values. And yeah. I would say we do go over those in orientation so that our agents know like, this is where we stand. And one yeah. of our big family, one of our values is family. Yeah. Uh, so we'll go over those values with the agents. Um, and I would say, this is kind of a wrap around, if yeah. you will. So when you think about recruiting, we think about are they a culture fit and how are they a culture fit? Do they fit within our five values? Yeah. If they don't, they're not, they're, you're not really going to join us anyways. Yeah. But so you recruit the agent, there's the onboarding and then there's the retention. Yeah. So for us, it's all like that all makes up our culture. Like we don't bring people that aren't a culture fit in and they don't want to be here anyways. I'm assuming that one of the brokers does a lot of the recruiting. Does yeah. he filter mm -hmm. or do you guys filter? So we have multiple meetings with agents before they join us. Um, okay. There is first a phone call with one of our broker owners. Okay. And then there's another phone call with our agent success director. Okay. And then there's usually an in-person meeting. Yeah. And then depending on what the agent is thinking or not thinking, there might be another meeting. Okay. So our owner will say, I don't think you're like a good fit for us. And it's not that we push people away. We just yeah. want people we've learned over the, at least the six years I've been here. We've done all different things with recruiting. We've brought in people that were like, oh, maybe, maybe it'll work out. No. At this point, <laughs> if we don't think you're dead, we're just going to tell you because it's not good for you and it's not good for us. Yeah. It's a yeah. waste of everyone's time. We don't like smooth talk people and say, this is what you're going to get or this. Like, we're like, no, you're going to get this and this yeah. is who we are. Do you want it? Yeah. I, you know, that's so helpful. I mean, I, I can, it's taken me a long time to say no to hiring people that are really skilled, but that I, I don't mean this in the wrong way, but I just get a bad vibe. Like, it's just not, we don't click Yeah. or, or I can say this because this is HR, my HR probably isn't listening. I just don't like them. Like, I don't think they're a nice person Yes. and like, they're smart as all get up, you yeah. know, and they have more degrees than anybody else but they're jerks. I don't want to work with jerks. And yeah. so that's hard to yeah. get to. And we've also found, do they need to make money? Oh, that's, that's interesting. Because if they don't, this business is too hard and they're not going to make it, you know, like you can make it and we will make you successful. Yeah. But if you don't want it, we can't want it more for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. Um, so tell me, okay, so onboarding happens, you do the orientation, orientation will start the Thursday after you get notified that licenses got transferred. Um, after that, what's the next thing that is really important from your perspective? Yeah, so they get a checklist yeah. that um, both parties can update. Yeah. And this checklist tells them, I should have said this before, but the checklist, it's, we use Notion. The agent can, can see the things that need to happen before orientation that they can go ahead and get a, a jump start on because you have yeah. like, I don't know, 1% of the agents that are like, I want to do all the things. Yeah. So we have a list of like <laughs> orientation that they can do. And yeah. then we have a during. And okay. we have someone that follows up on a monthly basis and like, hey, we need your head, we need your bio. We need, yeah. but it's everything that they need to give us and everything that they need to do. So it's super clear and we yeah. found that to be really successful. And then the whole team can know, sort like for instance, I 
don't manage that process. Yeah. So if I go on our website and I'm like, why is Joe not on the website? Well, if I click into his card in Notion, I probably can see, oh, we don't have a head start in bio. So that's why he's not on the website. Yeah. So um, that card has been really, really helpful. It also has their phone number, their email address. It yeah. has those role clarity cards I was telling you about in it. It also has the staff checklist for what we are doing for the agent. Yeah. So it really has um, saved our team a lot of time and the agent a lot of time for like, where's this? Where's that? Where does Shayla come in? What's. Yeah. So Shayla is, so John is the agent success um, coach. And I guess, I'm sorry, we're not big on titles here. So I have to like yeah. more people's titles. Yeah. That's um, fine. John is our director of age success and technology. So he is yeah. also the person he's in the recruiting. So it's one of our owners and John. Yeah. So they're already, John already knows the person that's coming in. He okay. can get the team up to speed and Hey, this person's very new or this person might need this, or they're going to need this. It's really important to know, like, especially when, she, cause Shayla is the next person. So John starts okay. orientation yep. and introduces the agents to Shayla. And then Shayla takes it from there. Okay. So she teaches the large majority of orientation. And then she'll intro our accounting staff to the agent uh, and pass them on. And so then when, so once orientation is done, and I'm always curious about the moment after the agent is like, okay, I got all this, yep. which they don't. I mean, you know, they yeah. remember 5% or whatever because they're human. Um, what's the re engagement part? Like, how do you get them? to do, I mean, agent bio is a perfect example. Yeah. If you don't have an agent bio, like getting someone to sit down and write it is like an act of God in many instances. How do you, yes. how do you, how do, you do that? Um, so with a bio, we just, we have what we found is helpful. Um, if for that specific example, we have someone on our staff that follows up on a monthly basis on all of, we just call it agent, new agent reconciliation. So on their calendar, they check in once a month, what are all the outstanding things? Interesting. Okay. And if they, if um, anyone in operations here or people that are listening in Notion or any project management software, software I use, we can easily see what agents are in what bucket. Yeah. What do we need from them? It's super easy with how we have it set up in Notion. Okay. So I kind of answered those backwards. No, that's but fine. With the bio, um, if we knew an agent didn't have that, we would just, or was struggling, we would say, we, Shayla's going to talk about that in orientation. So everything that's on that checklist, she's going to talk about. Yeah. So if the agent's like, ah, oh, bio, I don't know how to write things. She would offer like, hey, here is examples of bios on our website. Yeah. And for the agent, at least for our bio and headshot, if we don't have your bio and headshot, you're not on our website. And so that's like a, you could be losing money there. Yeah. So it's a little, you, you create a little friction. I mean, it's a missed marketing opportunity in many ways. Mm -hmm. And do you find that that is enough to get folks? You know, it really depends on the agent. But yeah. for the most part, our agents are excited to get in there and do the thing. Okay. And awesome. we're not going to hunt you down. Yeah. So, like, we're going to follow up a few, like a few times. Yeah. But for the most part, the things on that list are to help your business succeed. Yeah. And we can only help you so much. But for the most part, the agents that are coming on board with us, they, again, they want to make money. They need yeah. to make money. They have a family to support. We live in a very expensive area. The yeah. average income here is $150,000 a year just because of where we live. Yeah. And people need to make money. That's um, interesting. So you, in many ways, you filter by your recruiting process. And it sounds like by filtering on one culture fit for your mm -hmm. culture and for people who want to make, that need to make money, not just want to make money, yeah. but they indicate <laughs> that they need a job that's going to yeah. pay them. Um, you get people that are much more motivated than the casual might sell a home every oh, three or yes. four months because their wife or husband plays golf. Yes. In a way that we, so back in 2019, we implemented something called the market package. Okay. So at our brokerage, the only fees that we have is a $350 buyer fee that the buyer pays. 
Okay. Some of our agents pay it, but it's very few. Yep. But what we instituted in January of 2019 is what we call the marketing package fee. Um, and that fee is a monthly fee that the agent pays. Okay. And it includes all of their zip forms, EO insurance, realtor.com leads. I mean, a whole host of things, all kinds of swag that we have in the office, but a lot of very valuable things. We do very intense marketing for every single listing, and I won't go into all of that. Yeah. But agents don't want to pay a $150 fee and just sit around a license on the wall. Like it hurts enough to hurt. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Let me, let me unpack this a little bit. Yeah. So you're saying that by having a little financial pain in that fee, mm-hmm. that also weeds out casual, you yes. know, folks that don't need to make money. So these numbers will blow you away. And Shayla and I, so the marketing package was a little, was a little bit, there was like three people on our team that kind of all put it together. Yeah. We knew we were creating something, but we did not quite know what we were. Yeah. We did not know the results would be what they are. So um, from 18 to 19, we grew 29%. Okay. From 19 to 20, we grew 48%. And so that's in, tr- in transactions, correct? Yeah. So that is in transactions. Um, that's some size yeah. growth. Mm-hmm. So, and the reason why that growth, well, we think that growth happened is because we have a lot of agents that were not producing and they left. And then the agents that came and have continued to come produce. Interesting. So do you take new agents at all? We do, but so we used to take them. We're like, anyone and everyone come. Yeah. And then we realized like a year and a half later, whoa, these people take a lot. And I don't say these yeah, of, people, we love of agents. Yeah. But a brand new agent needs so much training that we just couldn't give. And so what was happening is we were bringing in all these new agents. Yeah. And our support staff was like, oh my gosh, we're so overworked. And the agents aren't producing. We're not making any money. So yeah. it was a lose-lose. Yeah. Um, and then the agents, we just, we couldn't support them. Yeah. We don't have that model. So then we said, you know what? We don't need to take new agents anymore because we can't support them. We can't give them what they need to grow their business. We yeah. can't mentor them. And we didn't have agents who wanted to mentor other agents. Yeah. So then we said, okay, we're going to not do new agents. Now we're to the point where we have so many experienced agents that we will take a new agent from time to time. But there is a course that our... Um, one of our broker friends teaches in another state and it's called the indispensable agent bootcamp. And that bootcamp, it takes an agent from green to know what they're doing in 90 days. I mean, really know what they're doing. I took the course myself. So like you get your license and you're like, yeah, I know all this book stuff. And then the course actually is like hand on hands on tactical things. How do I grow my business? How do I make my business? Yeah. So our agents, anyone that's new must take that course. Yeah. They have to do all the homework and it's a lot of work and they have to pay for it. That's awesome. You guys are ballsy. I love this. Well, we just learned from experience. It's, I don't, it just doesn't work the other ways. It can work for other people. It does not work for us. Yeah. No, I get it. I mean, it's really interesting because I think that many are afraid to I'd say take a stand for a quality of the agents that they bring in. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, of course we have clients that have a different recruiting model and they take anyone and everyone. And we also have clients like you and I have friends that are, that run brokerages and it's all over the place. And it feels like there's a lot of um, fear that you won't grow like bottom line growth, you know, transaction, you know, revenue, uh, revenue, gross commission income, you won't be able to grow that if you don't take everyone. And it's, you know, from what I'm hearing from you is you guys proved that wrong, which is you're now, you're much more selective. You force people through a little bit of a hoop. So it's not like you're just coddling everyone and that filters out the folks that shouldn't be there anyway. That's, that's exactly right. Um, And that, 
believe me, that was not like just our brilliant idea. Yeah. We got here because we failed a lot and we're like constant. I mean, recruiting for us is probably, it has been the hardest thing at least in the six years I've been here. Yeah. What's um, I know the name of the boot camp. What's the name of the boot camp? It's indispensable agent boot camp. How many folks on your, on your, in your brokerage have taken it? Oh, I actually don't know that number. Um, if I have to guess, yeah, I would say 15 or 20. Oh, wow. Okay. And the only reason that I say that high, because we have study have agents again, is yeah. because, because we knew the broker who was doing the program. A lot of our agents were in the beta. Okay. Got uh, it. But I mean, we had even, ex- we even encourage experienced agents to take it. Yeah. Um, because it's the Pat who developed the course because he is such a strategic thinker yeah. and also a broker. It's just a course. Unlike something I've ever seen. It's not just focused on sales. It's all a lot about strategy. So I interviewed Pat who is phenomenal uh, <laughs> and, and really, really thoughtful. I mean, he's been in the business for a couple of decades and I think between his teams and his brokerages have sold, you know, billion plus in real estate. He's smart and nice. And he seems to have a plan. I think he, he has a book coming out. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I like this, you know, sort of how you're, how you guys have evolved. Now, can you talk to me a little bit about um, what you guys do for every listing? Because I know you, wow. the marketing package has lots of stuff. Yes. What's in it? Oh boy. So the marketing package, as soon as a listing comes in, and I'm going to also talk through a little bit of how we do it, because if anyone is on this call, they're like, but because I'm always like, well, that's great, but how do you do that? Yeah. yeah. Um, so for our marketing package, the way that it kind of runs is our the MLS will send the listings into a spreadsheet yeah. um, that has everything that we need to know about that listing. Okay. Uh, we have a time, a turnaround time frame turnaround and that's color coded in the sheet so that our team knows like okay this one's yellow i gotta get to it before it yeah. that kind of thing um and so the listing comes in there's an instagram post there's a facebook post we have a, a just listed blog post every single week please check out our blog we have a lot yeah. of really great content on there um the blog post has like a highlight of the property but the actual social media posts are just as just that listing. Yeah. Um, and from there we do a really great email blast, which is just like an email campaign. We have our agents list if they give them to us. Yeah. Their email list, of course, with permission of the client. Um, and so then everyone in their sphere gets an email blast and it's branded for the agent. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think and this is sort of like set, I'll call it set it and forget it. Meaning for the agent, yeah. they don't really have to do anything. They have to do absolutely nothing. They just, and that's when Shayla and I were creating this, yeah. we we're like the only way this is going to be successful. If we make it to where the agent has to do nothing, they yeah. don't even have to give us photos because we set it up with a photography company. That is our preferred photography company. So if you use that photography company, which many companies, many agents do, we already have all the assets because we have a portal that we log into. Yeah. I like, I mean, this is one of the challenges of complicated marketing that you expect the agents to do the work is they're busy, right? Or should be busy. They should be busy trying to prospect and, and, you know, help their clients through transactions. They don't really have time to do it. No intentions, no time. And we're actually um, working on something that's going to make the agents even more efficient. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you've heard of Breakthrough Broker, but we yeah. are hoping to introduce that to our agents. That's great. We're going to go through a beta this fall, but that way they can, because some agents want to do a little bit more than that. And so yeah. this will enable them to do like brochures like super fast and flyers yeah, yeah. and social media posts and all the things. Tell me a little bit about, you guys provide a bunch of tools mm-hmm. as part of the marketing package. Um, Tell me about the tool set. Why did you choose them? Yep. Give me a little walk through there. Yeah. So, and this is probably another thing that might be a little bit interesting about us. Yeah. Um, while we do offer some tools to our agents, 
we have a lot more requests than we actually fulfill when it comes to giving agents shiny objects is what I like to call them. Yeah. So yeah. agents all get realtor.com leads. So they all get the leads for their listings. Okay. Um, if you go on realtor.com, you'll see that all of our listings are branded and it has the agent's personal branding and agents. I mean, we probably get about 500 leads a year and those yeah. go directly to the agent. Okay. Um, that could be controversial, but that's what we do. Yep. Um, they also get um, their zip forms, of course. They get their e insurance. It probably will be Breakthrough Broker, and we're looking at another tool, but we don't. We haven't added any new tools to it since 2019. Yep. Um, we've had requests, but when we send those requests out in our annual survey to agents, we were not getting good feedback. And as brokers know, those tools are super expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So if we're going to roll something out, it's not just going to be because staff thinks it's cool and the tech agent or the ter- technology director thinks it's cool. It's yeah. going to be because our agents are actually going to use it because yeah. they're busy and they don't have time. <laughs> and what do you, so you guys, okay, so you've got the tools. I'm assuming you have decent adoption on those tools. Oh, yes. Um, how do you drive that adoption? Is it just yeah, they need uh, to use it or... Do you have to do anything special to drive that adoption? That should be a better question. You know, for the tools that we have, I would say no, um, nothing special because they're ones that agents use all the time. Yeah. Um, now I would say there probably is fe- features within some of them that other agents don't use. Yeah. Um, but another thing that's different about us, I would think, is we don't offer a lot of shiny tools because when we're onboarding the agent, yeah, we specifically talk with them about, about their sphere. So yeah. do you have a list of 150 to 200 people that you could call right now that know your name and really know who you are? Yeah. If you don't, we're going to work on getting that list. Yeah. And that is like number one priority. They will have action items and that's something that they work on with one of our brokers. Okay. That is very important. And I'll make my, I'll get to my point, but yeah, that is really important. Um, and then we also, in that meeting, when they're onboarding or before they join us, where, what are, how do you reach your sphere? Yeah. Because what works for me, we have one agent who is incredible on video and does like all these crazy videos and like does all these lifestyle things. He's like yeah. a movie star. That is not all of our agents. Yeah. And yeah. so we don't want some of our agents to see that and be like, well, I can't do that. So I'm not going to be successful. Yeah. So we figure out what they're, how are they going to capture their clients? How are they going to nurture their clients? And we figure that out when they're onboarding yeah. that way they can be successful. And for that reason, we don't have a lot of like flashy, shiny things because our agents yeah. know their secret sauce. Like we might uh, help an agent pay for their golf membership because yeah. guess what? They golf all the time and that's how they're going to, that's how they work on their sphere. Yeah. Or maybe we're going to give them, um, we have one agent who is in an area where we don't, so we don't have a lot of billboards where we are, but in her area, there's a lot of billboards. Yeah. We're happy to throw some money at your billboards if that's like your marketing. That's going to work. Yeah. So we kind of do it more individually. Okay. Then like, let's spend $40,000 on this tool for all our agents that five of them are going to use. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and I will tell you what our approach is, is the harder approach. <laughs> yeah. It well, is. I mean, that's sort of one-to-one and very, I'll say, customized mm-hmm. approach to a marketing plan for each person. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I, I know Shayla and I know John that you have high quality humans <laughs> that can do that. Yes. It's not necessarily easy to do. It's not. And it goes back to one of our values, which is family, which is we deeply care about our agents. Yeah. Like we know their families, we know their interests. We, we know if like friends, I get all of our like uh, website inquiries. I know when I read those who that's going to fit best. Oh, interesting. Okay. And that's really important. Like, to know who is on the other side of you and how you can serve them. Because for us, it's all about serving our agents. Yeah. And that we think that makes a very successful brokerage because we know their 
with their interest in how to serve them. Yeah. How they tick. And so the, the stuff that Shayla does on the marketing side, even if it's customized for someone, there's all the new listing stuff. Yep. There's, um, and you guys make sure that they're on the roster yes. and that they're showcased well and they have good headshots and bios. Does everyone, do you launch everyone with a website? I can't remember what you guys Yeah, do. so as long as we get our agents headshot and bio, they get a press release, they get an email blast, they're on our website, they're on social media. It's like a huge marketing campaign when they join us, if they give us their headshot and bio. <laughs> Well, that seems to be a little leverage for yeah. getting them headshot and bio. And then um, one of the things that you had mentioned in the past is sort of this, um, I'll say onboarding, offboarding of tools. Is that John's job to get? Yeah, so basically up? teaching the agents all the tools. Got it. Is that was what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. And, yes. And, and, and that's that very process? detailed. Sorry. Yeah. No, no. What's that? What's that process like? Yes. So he will basically see how, like what their level of technology competency is basically yeah. Yeah. Um, in orientation. And you can really know, like, you know, yeah. if they had trouble opening their email or if it's already on their phone or yeah. so he just gauges it. And there's a little, it's more personalized yeah. just to make sure that they understand. So First, he, we don't have like a set, you must go to lone wolf orientation or you must go to I'm trying to think of other tools that we use. Um, yeah. There's plenty of them, DocuSign or whatever, but yeah. he can find out like when he's meeting with that agent in orientation, what their skill level is and what they need. So yeah. almost always, I would say like 90% of the time, he's going to have a follow-up call with them to go through this is how you use the realtor.com portal. This is how you use zip forms. In the zip forms, we actually have multiple videos recorded on that. Yeah. So for the people that are here, like how in the world do you do that? It's not efficient. Um, for zip forms, we do have videos recorded. But for things that are just more offhand and they're just going to have specific questions, he will yeah. do it all of them. Got it. So he probably has a lot of... Um, very patient handholding he has to do. I cannot even, I used to do that. Yeah. And he loves it. Um, not that I didn't awesome. love it, but it's just his lane. Yeah. What, tell me, um, I want to switch gears and talk about the future. What are some things that you're thinking about changing in your org? Yeah. Do? So for our team, we really focus when it comes to our staff, um, uh -huh. We want them to love their jobs and yeah. to have a really fun personal life outside of their jobs because yeah. this industry is really busy. Yeah. And I'm sure I could, um, everyone on this call could relate to the fact that everyone had a crazy year last year. Um, and so our team was incredible and they ran that hamster wheel. But at this point, we are going to be working um, on really getting our, our staff really healthy, yeah. um, hiring up. So that our staff can be really healthy and figuring out yeah. um, how can we outsource? How can we be more efficient? What isn't working? And those are questions we're always asking, yeah. but we're going to be asking them a lot more intentionally over the next probably six to nine months okay. to get everyone super healthy. And we call it in our 70-30, yeah. um, which is 70% 70, 70 of your work should be the thing that is in your lane. Yeah. 30% can be outside of, but we want yeah, a little bit of a stretch in their 70. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And you are, you're in the, are you hiring now? Um, we are hiring right now. Um, yeah. we're also looking to outsource. So <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. Um, we've got some questions. And yeah. so I think that uh, we've got an, let's start with the anonymous question. Uh, in our area, we have broker off, brokers offering 90% commission splits as soon as an agent signs up with them. That's hard to offer when you have two broker owners like in our agency. How do you recruit good agents when you compete with splits like that, that we can't offer? Oh man, I totally relate. Um, so when it comes to splits, if you're only negotiating on that, it's a race to the bottom. Yeah. There will always be brokers out there that are going to offer more than you. 
But like I said, um, we recruit based off of who you are and who we are. And those have to fit. So you have to want us for more than just the money, because I can guarantee you, we're going to give you money and you're going to be super successful. Yeah. But do you want the services we're offering? Okay. Because other brokerages are going to offer different. We have other brokerages in our area that are offering killer services. Yeah. But they're not ours. Yeah. So as an agent, those things have to align like your services, what you offer and what they want need to align. Yeah. And I do think that exists. And are you, do you think that part, so that makes sense to me. Do you think that part of the, the success that you guys have in recruiting, is it the two broker owners Mm -hmm. or is it the brand or is it a combination of those things? Like what, yeah. How are you guys able to do that and not offer 90% commission splits? Yeah. So other people, other people can't. Yeah, we do offer competitive splits for sure. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to why agents join us, it's yeah. because I think it's like when you're sitting across the table from someone and you're interviewing them and yeah. you or you're you're you just met someone at a coffee shop and you just click. It's like yeah. that. Yeah. Like when you're in those recruiting meetings with the agents, it's not about, um, I don't even like the word recruiting. Like yeah. it's, are you a family? Are you a culture fit? Um, because it should feel like a natural fit. Yeah. Um, yeah. It shouldn't feel like one is selling to the other. Yeah. Like, do you want what we have? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a, one more part of that. I think we do offer better commissions. However, agents have to meet certain caps. Mm-hmm. Uh, and do you, okay. So this is a recruiting question. Do you meet agents at networking events? Where else do you recruit email blast to recruit agents? Oh man, we have done all the things we've done. All the things. <laughs> we have really done all the things. Um, right now what's working for us is something called smart setter. Okay. Um, I give them a shout out. So they know what we are looking for and they call agents and set up calls with our broker owner. And that has been a game changer for us. So I definitely recommend looking at a smart setter. Totally. Smart setter. Smart setter. Mm S-E-T-T-E-R. Okay. Smart setter. Look it up. That anonymous person who asked the question. Uh, We've got a few other questions. Um, Tracy. Uh, I think, I don't know if Tracy's going to come on, but I'm going to. Hello. Oh, we got Tracy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. Um, do you want to ask your questions? Yes, I had several. <laughs> okay, good. Go for it. Do you want so, to turn on your camera? Or are you going to be? Oh, sure. I can't. I don't know how to do that. There's no option to do that. Oh, then don't worry about it. Okay. So um, the first one was from the beginning, I was trying to jot down how you're structured. Um, So if you could just go over real quickly the the team member roles again. Um, And then the second part of that is between your orientation and that appointment with that tech director um, about the, the, you know, the management system, et cetera. What was that step in between that you have agents go through? So that was the first, I guess, two part question. And then I have two other questions after that. Yeah. So for our team, and like I said, we're not um, super big on titles. So I'm actually, you'll find this funny. I'm actually opening up our staff on our website, not because we have that many, but because I cannot always remember titles. Okay. Uh, but if you do go to our website, at tokoproperties.com, you can see our support team. Okay. Uh, so I am our operations and client relations director. Um, that involves everything operations and then any like relationships that we have as a brokerage. So photography company, sign company, uh, all the, all the vendors, part of stuff. Yeah. any of that I manage. And then we have Shayla, who's our creative director. She does all of our design, all of our cons. She oversees all of our content. Um, and then we have an accounting, Jenny, and she does everything relating to accounting and finance. She also has someone that assists her, which is Allie. And Allie handles all things office and communication. So a lot of internal communication events, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, And then we have our technology and agent success director, John. Um, He does everything technology and he does a lot of recruiting. And the, he's kind of like the in-between 
our owner, one of our broker owners and agents when it comes to recruiting Got and it. agent retention. So he can say, Hey, I think you need to give this person a call or, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Gotcha. And then we have um, Stephanie, who is our marketing and administrative assistant, and she oversees, she basically is Shayla's right hand, and she does compliance, so she works with Jenny as well in accounting. Great. And the second question you asked was, what was the step between orientation and the meeting between meeting with the tech person, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So that is just going to be a time where the agent is, so basically in orientation, they have the first part where they're introed with um, John, who's the technology person. And then he's intro, he intros them into to Shayla, who does pretty much everything else in orientation other than accounting related things. But mm-hmm. after orientation and between that tech meeting, the agent's gonna be working through their checklist and notion. I don't you. know if you have any other questions off of that. Yes. So um, how much do you mention that you have um a monthly fee that agents pay that includes some leverage. So, you know, insurance or realtor.com leads, listing marketing, et cetera. I wondered what is that monthly fee that agents yeah. pay? Sorry, I didn't, wasn't trying to be secretive. Um, it's $150 a month. And oh, I would definitely it. recommend, um, at least for us, when we instituted that fee, um, we did it intentionally lower than what it cost us. Um, and so I would recommend if you are going to institute a fee, go higher first (laughs) because it's going to be really hard to raise it in the future. So that wasn't intentional to make it lower than it actually costs. You you did the opposite. We did it because we were already offering the services and we finally realized that we need to make money on this somehow. And we we're still not, Yeah. um, Yeah. but yeah, let me just unpack that. I think because you talked to me about this, you instituted it for people who are already getting the services, but they weren't paying anything. And so Tracy, I think to answer your question, there was a little like, we're going to start charging you. So we wanted to make the fee low enough that it might be, that it's more palatable Palatable than the actual cost. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But I think, I mean, I'll just chime in here, Tracy. I think if you were, if you're not offering the services and you're going to start offering them, then I think it's a much easier conversation to go, we've got a marketing package. It's X. You weren't getting this marketing package before. And so right. there's an easier value conversation to have. You know? Yeah. We were looking at different things, like sort of the depend for like dependent agents and like, you know, independent and like kind of all three having just the option if they want to have the leverage center type of thing Yeah. Um, for people that so some will love that and some will just want to do their own thing. So we just want to see kind of what makes sense to offer people that are in that group that really do yeah. want to pay, pay into that and what that would be. I mean, the one, the, Tracy, mm-hmm. the one thing that I can say from, um, you know, we have a few thousand brokers uh, on our platform and the ones when I speak to them and they do some sort of, I'll say set it and forget it packages, meaning the agent doesn't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Those are the most, the least frustrating for your, your ops team Mm -hmm. and the most successful because I mean, you have more experience than I managing agents. They just don't do stuff. And so if you put together a package where they have to do something, it's really tough to get success. Agreed. Okay. And last question was, um, so with the boot camp class, the indispensable agent boot camp, is that something that they require to take before they onboard with you or once they onboard with you, they have 90 days to complete it. And if they don't, are you saying thank you? No, thank you. Yeah. Um, so they, they need to have their license to do that course because the homework is like, write a contract, write 10 more contracts do CMA. So they have to have the MLS access. So it is within, it's in their onboarding time, but it's, I mean, they're going to join us and then it's going to be like, you have to get this done. And so in those meetings where one of our broker owners is following up with the agent, that's when, you know, they have some accountability. And usually, especially if a new agent is joining us, they have reoccurring meetings with our broker owner. And that is also why we don't have a lot of new agents because our broker owners still sell. So we can only do so much. 
Yeah. Okay. And so is that a course that's paid for by your brokerage or? Well, the agent has to pay for the course. Um, there are times that we're, depending on their financial situation, um, like we've hired some really young agents that just don't have the funds. We'll work on some kind of payment program, but it's not going to be us paying for the whole thing. Um, because again, they need to have skin in the game. If they join and they're not willing to invest I don't know, $400, $500 into their future career. I mean, we tell agents, you need to have a, a pretty much a year of income set aside because you need to expect to not make money for the first year. Will yeah. you probably make money in the first year? We hope so. And we're going to do everything we can. But you need to have that money set aside. So $500, we think, is, again, skin in the game because we have seen many agents who... Everyone wants to get their real estate license. There's more real estate agents yeah. uh, in the United mm-hmm. States yeah. than I think. I can't remember the stat, but it was it was like crazy. Um, so everyone wants to be in real estate, but do they really want it? Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. And if they sorry, last thing, the accountability. If they don't complete that program within that time frame or soon after, like you know, is there a point where you do say, hey, like we've given you a lot of space to to do this and show your commitment. So this is not the right fit for you. We would have that conversation. We haven't had to have it yet, but. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Tracy, thanks for joining. All right. Uh, We've got a couple more questions. Um, So Josie said there was, um, you were talking about growth and she wanted to know about uh, 2019 to 2020. And I think you had said it was 48% growth. Um, okay. So that's question number one. She had two questions. Yes. Can you, can you explain that? What's the, do you remember the number of sides? Yeah, or? I have it right in front of me. So 18 to 20, we were 29%. Okay. And then 19 to 20. So we instituted the marketing package in 19. Yeah. Um, that we go 48%. And can you give that, do you have that in relative numbers, like the number of transactions? I have sales volume. That probably yeah, I have sales volume and I have average sales volume. Yeah, let's do sales um, volume. Okay, so sales volume in 2018 was I'm just going to round up was 170 million, okay. and then 19 was 212 million. Yeah, and then 2020 was 330 million. And I will say, just for easy math, if yeah. you put our average sale price at 585, yeah. then that'll give you the numbers you need. For transaction. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um, Josie had another question. Um, the course, which Josie, just so you're clear, the course is a paid course mm-hmm. that um, the individual agent needs to pay. It is available to everyone. I don't believe that Pat has limited that course. Um, I don't think so. I think he's trying to figure out how to expand it. Um, but I don't know the details. You would have to go to the site. I think it's the site is. Uh, the indispensableagent.com. Um, hopefully that answers your questions. Um, uh, Charlene has a question, which is, she says, what suggestions do you have for a brokerage where the recruiter slash trainer department is just me? Yeah. So in, uh, I'm guessing that she is the broker or. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. So if it's just you. Um, I would first think about what kind of agent do you really want to hire? Like, what are you looking for? Mm -hmm. What is, what does the ideal agent look like for you? Because you need, if you're going to be spending time recruiting, what are you looking for? That will make it a lot easier. Um, and please learn that from us. We just took everyone and it did not work. Um, it overtaxes your staff and you cannot serve. A lot of the agents, if they don't even want to be there, it's really hard. And yeah. you spend a lot of time hen-housing nothing, <laughs> which well, sounds bad. You create, it's sort of a, a downward spiral, right? Because the person you recruited, let's say you guys stopped recruiting um, uh, new agents almost exclusively. Yeah. And when you recruit a new agent, they have lots of needs because they need to be educated. Yeah. And if you don't have the time to educate them, they're like WTF yes. getting the support I need. And so there's this negative spiral that happens. Um, all right. That's an interesting. So Charlene says she's not the broker. She's okay. an individual. 
She and okay. So if you're not the broker, um, I don't know if you sell or what your other responsibilities are, but I would definitely say that smart setter again, it might not be the magic sauce for you, but it was the magic sauce for us. And that is because we, our staff spent so much time cold calling and emailing and just trying to figure out how could we just have agents to have like a serious conversation with us? Like, that's what we want. Yeah, And I can't tell you how smart setter does it. Um, but for us, it's been affordable and yeah. it gets the appointments on the calendar. You tell them, yeah. this is how many appointments I would like in a month. Yeah. Um, this is my availability. And they are boom on the calendar. That's great. Now, you do have to have someone with a talent, like, like a sales, like a, like a, like a pitch, like you need yeah. to be yeah. to the point on the call. Right. Yeah. But that's one of our broker owners who does that. So that could totally be you. Yeah. That's great. Um, Alex. Oh, I, I'm going to totally mess up your last name. <laughs> Alexandrov. Maybe I didn't mess it up. Uh, you got to give me kudos if I got that right. Um, you talked about the agent marketing package. Um, I think I know some of the things um, you've got. You give them, you put them on the site, you give them a website, you give them zip forms, DocuSign. What else? Yeah, and I'm actually um, pulling. And guys, I uh, when Shayla and I created this in 2019, it was something that I knew like the back of my hand. Um, but I don't know it like the back of my hand anymore. So, um, but you, it's everything you included. We don't pay for there. So the DocuSign is not included. But that is a service that we have a discount for. Yeah. Um, so that is included. And then we have a lot of like office swag. So like mugs and we have an amazing resource guide and our resource guide, um, has an in-depth, um, and basically it's the point of it is to give to buyers or if you're going to a listing appointment and it has a lot of community information. It has what the process is of buying a home. Um, it's just a really great resource guide and it's printed on really high quality material. It's something that makes the agent it's beautiful. Look I remember she, Shayla, she was the design oh, man, yeah. queen behind that. Awesome. Um, there is another last question, I believe. Um, do you charge a sign on fee? I think that's the question. I don't know if that makes sense. Like a you're joining, so you have to pay us a certain amount of money kind of fee? Uh, That doesn't sound like the right question, but let's answer that one. I know you don't. No, we don't. Okay. Um, Do you charge a fee for signs? How about that? Yes, we do. And we don't charge that fee. It's just the fee that our sign company charges. Got it. it. Um, And they charge $50 to put the sign in the ground and take it out. $50 together. Awesome. Um, And I did open our marketing package. So sorry, guys. Um, But our marketing package, one thing that isn't, it's not a, tool it's just a service that we do yeah um and i could go through all the details but basically what you need to know is with the marketing that we do for agents their listings are seen by over two thousand local residents and agents um, within our community Um, that includes two different blog posts and two different email blasts an instagram post a facebook post um it's on pinterest it had i think the artist in the email blast we do one week of Facebook and Instagram advertising. We also, this was pre COVID, but um, we did the same thing for their open houses. So blog post, email blast, Instagram post, and then they have that resource guide. Yeah. Tools in the office and then all the other tools that they get zip forms, realtor.com, you know, insurance. Got it. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, John sister has a question. I think I pronounced your name wrong. I apologize. Um, John says, what was the $350 agent charge on listings? It's not $350. It's $150. That's the marketing package. And that includes the marketing for listings. I will answer that question. Yes, for you. But he did hear 350 correctly because we have a $350 buyer fee. Ah, buyer that is fee. not optional. Got it. Okay. Um, the anonymous attendee is asking, do you charge for signs? We answered that. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. The, tr- the company charges for signs. You said it was $50, right? To do the sign and put it in the ground. Yes. Right. And agents can order that on an app. 
um, that our, our sign company uses. It's super convenient. I did not mention this, but our marketing package fee is not optional. Oh, that's actually a really good point. <laughs> um, uh, that will, um, Tracy, back to you. You know, I know you're thinking about doing optional things. Uh, it's interesting to hear that Blake is not doing optional. It's like if you if you to get success, we've got to be in this together. I, yeah, I, I think Seth Godin says it might be him. Yeah. People like us do things like this. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, just to clarify then. So the marketing service fee for like the listings that somebody has. Mm-hmm. Um that's not optional. And is that the same thing as the monthly fee for like, that includes, you know, insurance and, yes. and mm-hmm. leads, et cetera. So yes. all of that is rolled into one for $150 a month mandatory. Yes. And the reason that we did it mandatory is because we wanted control of branding. Got okay. It. And we have, I mean, there's plenty of research to back up why you would want to do that for branding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we covered all of the questions. Blake, thank you so much. This has been great. We certainly got a lot of people to raise their hand and ask some questions. Um, I can't wait to do this again. It was super fun. I'm just honored that I can give you guys some helpful information. I hope it's helpful. Um, I am happy. I don't know. if you guys want to find me, just go to atokaproperties.com. That's A-T-O-K-A properties.com. Yep. Um, I'm there. You can email me and I'm happy to help any way that I can. There's been plenty of people that Placers introduced me to that have really helped take our brokerage forward. And if I can do that for you, please just shoot me an email. Blake, thank you. Say hi to everyone. Thank you guys so much. All right. Bye-bye.